uh, dear guests of uh, Riga Aviation Forum, again we are returning uh, back to our studio and right now we will talk uh, about aviation cargo and logistics, uh, e-commerce, uh, customs issues, uh, Brexit uh, and of course uh, Covid uh, impact on, on, on aviation industry. First I would like to introduce our uh, panel, uh, panel members. I would like to start with uh, Snežina Kazakova. Uh, she is a CEO of uh, DHL Latvia. Uh, Irena Knok uh, is a, uh, uh, sorry, your position? Uh, uh, head of Customs Methodology <coughs> Division, of National <coughs> Customs Board of Latvia. Uh, excellent. Uh, Vitaly uh, Andreev uh, from uh, Atra Nylons CEO and uh, Mete <coughs> Erne uh, CEO of uh, Havash. Uh, we are all are hard heated by COVID disease. But it looks like that uh, we have only one industry which actually uh, in some extension even benefiting from the COVID because a uh, lot, uh, lot of the cargoes were traveled uh, before by passenger uh, airlines. Uh, demand and supply function is disturbed and in some cases uh, some airlines even even benefiting. But in general, of course, this, this crisis is, uh, is a very hard, it's uh, not seen uh, ever in aviation industry and the consequences will, will, will be long and uh, quite, quite hard. And previously built logistics uh, chains uh, actually are, are, are damaged and we will need to restore them back. Today we will talk also about sustainability in uh, aviation and the cargo industry. And first I would like to ask one, one all, uh, same question for all, all panelists. Uh, that's uh, Riga Airport. Riga in general before the crisis uh, was a leading airport in the Baltics and uh, with, with a huge uh, global ambitions to become emerging market in a uh, northern Europe uh, dimension. Therefore, the question, uh, what we need to do to restore our positions, restore our leadership uh, and uh, continue development also in, uh, in the cargo field. Uh, Snežina, uh, what's your comment about it? I believe that uh, we have started quite a good uh, you know, trend uh, with uh, the airport, Riga airport being very active, especially in the cargo sector and, uh, you know, uh, attracting more uh, cargo uh, transporters and I, I believe that uh, this is the right way to go because as you said during the COVID crisis actually the e-commerce de market was developing and it is the trend for the last probably five or six years already. This is the part of the economy, the world economy that is moving forward and driving the whole economy forward but especially in the COVID crisis, the uh, people started uh, trading much more online and uh, because of the limitations of uh, personal contact, because of the uh, way they wanted to attack still obtain some goods and uh, obtain them safely and uh, therefore uh, our uh, industry the express uh, delivery industry has developed quite a lot and from the supply chain point of view actually uh, this part of transportation has developed quite a lot as we saw in Vitali's presentation before um, there was a peak with uh, transferring all these um, masks and uh, safety equipment to different countries, but also uh, the e-commerce development helped a lot and uh, increased our volumes. Uh, the big problem that arises from this is that uh, uh, actually because of uh, the passengers' flights cancelled, uh, the capacity and the pressure on the cargo flights like ours has increased quite dramatically. We, uh, mm, we are struggling with capacity, therefore some uh, uh, companies need to impose a little bit more taxes and more uh, charges in order to uh, compensate the the necessary secondary flights, third uh, level flights, etc. So we were um, 
we are doing our best, but actually, as many of the participants in this forum mentioned today, investments are needed and they are needed now. Therefore, for instance, DHL globally is buying new planes or uh, uh, re redoing some old passenger planes into cargo planes in order to, first to uh, make them greener, second to use more capacity on its uh, potential uh, new lines that are uh, that have developed during the COVID crisis and uh, we are moving forward in order to um, be able to satisfy all customer needs. In the recent months, we have seen already that uh, the trend is, uh, you know, leveling down on a higher level, but uh, it's a good to say. And I can uh, say that from our side, from uh, DHL side, we will support uh, the development of Riga Airport uh, with increasing our volumes because that's what we expect and uh, having in mind that we have been double uh, digit growing in the last years that's why we needed our investment which you saw in Arthur Savelyev's film uh, therefore we will uh, support in all the ways that uh, airport will need to become this uh, uh, regional center which we want to be Thank you. Thank you for, for, for your uh, good words and uh, your development plans in Riga Airport. Uh, uh, custom services are very important, crucial part to the value chain of uh, logistics. Uh, same question uh, to you, Ms. Knoka. What we need to do to be uh, more competitive to compare to our neighbors? Uh, actually, Riga Airport is doing the, the best uh, because uh, they know uh, what is necessary uh, for work in the modern world. And it means you need IT systems and electronic communication of data between customs and trade. Uh, it is uh, very, uh, very, uh, let's say, basic thing in, 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 in today's relations. Uh, with customs and um, uh, with, when uh, this uh, COVID crisis uh, were uh, at its top, uh, we felt that yes, uh, our uh, business is working. They are working with uh, electronic systems. We do not have to meet tete-a-tete uh, -tete, and uh, it is good. And we hope uh, the same uh, cooperation will be uh, in the future. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for your co comment. I can just uh, add, because I'm also involved in this uh, area of activities of Riga Airport, I can uh, highlight uh, that uh, despite you are used to criticism uh, all, all the time, from, from airport side, I would say uh, great thanks because uh, you are, uh, we're not seeing you as a government entity, we're seeing you as a partner which uh, gives us uh, support. And uh, especially in the uh, last few years, uh, this has helped us uh, a lot. And slightly we are going to the next, next uh, presenter, Vitaly and Andreev. And uh, Atran Airlines is flying uh, almost on a daily basis uh, from China to Riga. And without uh, participation of the customs office and uh, involvement as a partner developing this uh, transparent and good system of uh, procedures, uh, this project would be uh, impossible. Uh, Vitaly, same question to you. Uh, when we can see your flights even more from Riga? So I hope uh, from December, oh sorry, from October this year, so uh, next month, we are planning to increase our flights to Riga uh, from five, six flights a week uh, to daily flight. So we can support with Sinal because, uh, as mentioned before, e-commerce is really, uh, really fast-growing industry, and especially uh, during uh, double eleven, du during uh, high season, uh, we will see uh, more demand uh, from this niche. So that's why you will see us more uh, of, uh, from uh, from October. So that's actually a very good news, uh, uh, which are published uh, in this forum today. That's uh, the traffic uh, 
uh, by, given by Atron Airlines uh, definitely will increase and that means this is a healthy business uh, in, our, in our environment. Uh, thanks of, thank you for great news. Uh, Mete, uh, we have uh, Havash as a ground handling company here in Riga. Do we have a chance to see Havash as a cargo operator here in Riga? And what needs to be done for this? Well, um, actually, we have been always interested to develop our business uh, on cargo side as well in every market where we have been present. Um, in Turkey, we have a very strong presence. Um, we, we recently opened our new facility in new Istanbul airport um, with 11 million euros of investment in the uh, facility. Um, when we looked lastly in the cargo handling business in uh, Riga airport, what we have seen was that there was some kind of overcapacity in terms of facilities in the market, mm -hmm. in the in the airport. Um, so we considered it to be a saturated market. So there would be no added value by a new player coming into the market. But um, we, we have been following up the developments since then, because we were also under the impression that this overcapacity would bring eventually probably for some players to pull out of the market. Um, and uh, the, the recent uh, developments with uh, Rail Baltica uh, coming, connecting uh, with the airport and, and possible uh, demolition of some available cargo facility capacity, I believe uh, puts a potential uh, opportunity for companies like Havash in Riga Airport, and we will be interested to look into that possibility um, when the time comes. Thank you, thank you, Meta. Well noted. That means we need to continue our uh, discussion and dialogue about this. So uh, today we are all affected by crisis. Uh, that's for uh, there's uh, less uh, discussions about uh, efficiency, about uh, green thinking. Uh, uh, does DHL has a green thinking and uh, how, it's, uh, it's how it looks like? Definitely, and I can say in all fields. For instance, in the strategic um, aim goal for the company globally, Deutsche Post DHL actually, we have uh, uh, said that we are striving in 2050 to have zero carbon emissions. And we are doing everything to change our fleet, uh, to uh, improve, uh, to decrease the carbon foot footprint that we are generating. We are also attracting and uh, asking our customers to join us. We are also uh, asking our employees to have the same mindset. And I can say that this year, especially in Latvia, uh, during the even during the COVID crisis, with the, keeping the two meters difference uh, distance, we have uh, planted 2,000 oak trees from DHL Latvia, just to help and to show our devo de uh, devotion to this. Um, a target, which is the global company target, but here, what what we are doing here in Latvia, actually, I have brought just a, a, a picture to show you that uh, we have already replaced one of our um, cars with a bicycle, which we call Cubicycle, yeah? And uh, we are already in the streets of Riga with this Cubicycle and uh, not uh, uh, generating any carbon emissions. We have already placed a business case for, our, uh, for approval to our global management to buy two electric cars next year. And we are moving forward to increasing our share of the electric fleet quite uh, quickly after that. The struggle that we have, for instance, is that Latvia is uh, still uh, lagging behind in terms of offering a good lease for such cars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we need to, uh, let's say, make the road for such a development of everybody, not only of our company, but all the transportation companies. And uh, in this aspect, I would say that automation, uh, robotization, all improvements that we are 
doing, doing to improve our efficiency are also helping the sustainability cause. And uh, I would advise everybody to focus on this because it is inevitable in uh, the current digital world that we can lag behind and hope that we will uh, respond to our customers' needs in the best possible way. Actually, the social pressure that we get for this sustainability, for being greener, for you know, uh, have uh, quick and uh, adequate response to the customer needs is actually um, driving this uh, um, forward and is making us uh, better and better. So that's what is our focus. Thank you, Snezhina. Uh, to continue our discussion, um, as I noted, customs <coughs> in our country, uh, in airport Riga is our partner. Uh, but uh, taxes need to be paid, and uh, this is uh, need to be transparent and, and fair uh, and fair practices. And uh, uh, today in Europe, uh, this taxation uh, <coughs> approach is changing. The question is uh, how <coughs> how how it will change uh, taxation uh, due to e-commerce shipments uh, uh, that's uh, from uh, one penny. Uh, VAT tax will be obliged. How how this will change the procedures and how it will change uh, customs office? Uh, actually, these uh, procedures will be uh, fully electronical. At the moment, we are working uh, in electronical mm -hmm. environment, but the VAT commerce package uh, uh, it couldn't be done uh, without uh, uh, IT systems. You can't work uh, in paper with uh, millions of uh, consignments. And uh, what is good, uh, there will be equal rules for express consigners and for uh, postal operators who are working with UPU convention. The same rules, the same customs declaration, and the same rules regarding safety and security, what is very important in, uh, in uh, the whole uh, European Union, actually in the whole world. Yeah, and uh, at the moment um, uh, we are uh, finalizing our systems and they soon will be ready for testing uh, for express um, couriers and for our uh, postal operator and, and we hope testing will be uh, good, uh, results will be okay and uh, at the beginning of the new year we will know uh, that we will we, we, are, we are ready, yeah, and there will be a little bit of time to prepare ourselves uh, to the first of July. Excellent, yeah. uh, Snezhina, Does it mean that uh, competition uh, in between uh, courier service and postal services will will increase, and how it will, how it will affect your business in Latvia? Um, for us, competition has always been a good driver. I mean, because it is requesting from us to stay on top, to be on the front of everything. So we are doing uh, quite a lot of improvements in the processes. Uh, as uh, uh, Irena mentioned, uh, we have been volunteering even to test the system in advance in the preparation phase, just to be able to be sure that we are prepared for the change. And I believe uh, all our competitors are following us. Competition will never decrease. And that's, uh, as I said, is a good thing for me because it's driving everybody ahead as quickly as possible. Finally, at the end of the day, the most important is what our customers want. And our customers want it quick now instead of yesterday, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and therefore we are uh, moving forward with automatization, with robotization. We are recently deploying probably three new systems in order to optimize our processes, get quicker, and part of the this optimization process is actually our new investment at the airport, because there we will have a new uh, state-of-art uh, sorting system, which will help us uh, sort uh, 3,000 shipments per hour, which is quite impressive, and it will uh, give more time to our customers when they re receive the shipment earlier to send it later after that to Europe or somewhere else in the world, and therefore they will benefit from uh, this uh, let's say, competition between us. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. That means competition is good, and uh, uh, from the positions of uh, business, I, th I think that uh, Riga Airport uh, definitely uh, will work to attract more players uh, to our site. And uh, uh, actually, we need to think about how to improve our services even more uh, because we need to fight with uh, such a uh, conventional uh, hubs uh, around us like uh, Helsinki, like uh, like uh, Amsterdam. Uh, we are working a lot to give a message that we are faster, we are more efficient, <laughs> and we are less expensive. Uh, Vitaly, uh, any comments about about uh, Riga airports? Uh, how you like uh, our services? Is there any, let's say, areas for improvement or? Uh, uh, any ideas uh, how to be more uh, efficient? So for me, as, a, as for uh, airline, everything is good. So because we have a really uh, fast rotation uh, <coughs> from arrival till, till departure out of Riga, so everything is okay. But the most uh, crucial thing is to understand what, uh, let's say, final customer needs. And uh, in this case, uh, to be more uh, attractive uh, for freight forwarding business, for also e-commerce, um, uh, I would like uh, to mention uh, several points. So first of all, we already discussed during this panel, it's uh, uh, less paperwork and uh, from customer side, sorry, from customer side, uh, all processes in warehouse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So even, oh, sorry, especially during COVID, uh, the COVID era, yes, uh, to, to to stop spreading this virus, uh, try to minimize uh, physical contact between uh, different personnel. It's better to manage uh, information within IT channels. So that's why less paperwork. It means uh, easy to manage information and uh, fast custom clearance and all uh, our procedure. So this is uh, first point. Uh, so second uh, point is uh, for e-commerce, which is more crucial as well, and most critical, it's uh, fast transit time from uh, aircraft to uh, middle mile uh, from warehouse. So that's why you can speed up all processes in warehouses uh, where actually uh, we have mail and also courier packages so it's very it's very important and the, uh, the last thing but i think it's very important for uh next uh, maybe not couple of years but at least in the horizon of six months uh it's health and care infrastructure uh for uh, vaccine transportation so at this moment uh we still do not have let's say proven vaccine which we which can distribute it uh, within the world, but next year, I think will be uh, uh, more, su more, uh, more successful for uh, health and care industry and especially for vaccine distribution. So it's why you as a uh, really uh, good airport should be ready for uh, uh, this uh, uh, process and uh, you as a part of this supply chain for vaccine, especially it especially for uh, uh, air industry, uh, you have to be ready uh, to uh, offer uh, or to propose some infrastructure, even temporary infrastructure for vaccine. And uh, you have a good chance to be like a gateway for Eastern Europe uh, for this type of transportation because you have all capabilities uh, starting from, let's say, uh, aprons, and uh, with warehouse activities uh, near the airport. But the key factor is infrastructure, maybe temporary, uh, again, uh, for vaccine, uh, so including temperature control and fast transit time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vitaly. It's a very interesting uh, comment, and definitely we need to work on this, uh, on this subject. Uh, Mete, uh, from your point of uh, perspective, what goes first? If we would talk about demand and supply function, what goes first, uh, infrastructure or a cargo flow? What needs to be set, uh, settled before uh, to be successful in this business? 
Well, it's a difficult question because I think the answer may change in different markets. But the, I mean, let me give you a simple example. In Turkey, for instance, there is um, a good production of pharma products, but there is no real pharma facility at the moment. So a lot of uh, a lot of uh, pharma cargo produced in Turkey is actually trucked out to Central Europe and flies out using the pharma fa facilities um, in 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 Central Europe mostly. Now um, the new Istanbul airport allows us uh, to create those facilities and uh, use that air cargo capacity in our own airports. Um, I think this is a good example. So we know there is capacity, uh, there is demand, and there is no facility. So I think it's easy to calculate that uh, doing an investment in that area uh, will return will give positive uh, return in the end. Um, but there are also some tricky cases where there is no um, demand. Uh, because there is no facility and you may see the light at the end of the tunnel, tunnel meaning that you can decide to do an investment in the facility believing that the presence of the facility would create the, the, the demand uh, by shifting the transport modes and the routes the cargo is taking. So I think there is no simple and single answer to this question. It has to be analyzed separately for each market. Okay, Mehta, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, to summarize, I would uh, I just remember a sentence said by Steve Jobs uh, uh, when he invented a uh, phone without buttons. Uh, people don't know that they need phone without buttons until it's not presented. So that means uh, uh, supply creates uh, also a demand. And also that's, that's uh, how today we also need to think about uh, this uh, crisis. If we will think about this crisis as an opportunity, uh, we definitely can uh, benefit from, from, from this uh, situation. Uh, one more thing that uh, that's will affect us uh, rather soon is the Brexit issue and um, uh, definitely we are not happy that uh, British are leaving uh, our European Union uh, but this this is a fact we need to live with this uh, how will change our environment uh, due to this uh, uh, Brexit uh, issue I would like to ask others to Miss Knocka Actually, we are waiting uh, approximately 10% uh, increase in cargoes in, in Latvia. It's not so much uh, if we uh, compare ourselves with other member states, uh, but we have to be prepared. Uh, it is easier for customs because uh, we know how it is to trade with third countries and uh, what, uh, it is, uh, what is necessary to do how, what customs procedures have to be for performed. Uh, but it is a challenge for those uh, ones uh, who are not uh, mm, uh, familiar with customs matters. Uh, luckily, we have possibilities in Latvia to work hand in hand with uh, uh, tax administration. Uh, we both are parts uh, of one state revenue service, and it means uh, we have all uh, necessary information. And uh, in Latvia, luckily, uh, at the moment, are uh, only a little bit more than uh, 3,000 uh, economic operators uh, who are uh, trading with the UK, uh, but who are not familiar with customs. And it means uh, we hope uh, this. Uh, a period uh, at the very beginning of real Brexit uh, will not be so very hard uh, for Latvia, but uh, exporters have to be prepared. Luckily, um, 
it is easy to access uh, our uh, IT systems. Uh, it is possible uh, without any additional exp uh, expenses to do this, and it's very good, uh, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, and we have uh, pretty good uh, possibility to use outsourcing. We have express couriers, uh, customs brokers, customs agents, and they are of the best quality. So uh, we don't feel very bad regarding okay. uh, Brexit. Uh, yes, there will be problems because in UK lives more than uh, 100,000 uh, Latvians. And uh, yes, they will not be very happy, but life is life. <laughs> life is life, definitely. We are not happy uh, for extra procedures, but it's, it's a good uh, message uh, to the industry to be prepared because uh, you have still time to consider your business, to consider your activities and uh, to think about it. Uh, and definitely it will not uh, stop our uh, export, it will not stop our business if we will adjust uh, procedures uh, accordingly. Uh, going to further, may, yep. may I add something here? We are also helping our customers, which are currently shipping to the UK or receiving from UK, just to be prepared by giving them a checklist what they need to do, like create an AORI number if they don't have it. And uh, we hope that this constant reminding about this preparation will also help them through, which I believe is the key. As you mentioned. So I will I will then do an ad. If you have a questions uh, how to export goods to Brittany, uh, please Ask address uh, DHL. DHL. They yeah. definitely will help you, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Uh, great. But um, uh, continue to co talk about sustainability uh, issues. Uh, my question is, it's uh, actually it's about to Snežina and uh, to Vitaly, and maybe Meta can add something. Uh, uh, how those logistic chain, chains uh, will change after the COVID crisis? Because definitely it will be a different, uh, different line, different uh, approaches. Uh, uh, what are the directions we need to consider about logistic chains in a, like a European and maybe a global uh, level? Um, I can start with uh, saying that the current demand from customers is to speed up the uh, logistics chains. Yeah, and this is a trend that is obvious in the recent years. And actually, everybody needs to adapt to this requirement from uh, customer side because uh, simply it's inevitable in these uh, modern times where everything is dynamic, developing very quickly, the times of digitalization. Customer expect us to be really on top of the things and proactive in terms of uh, optimizing our um, uh, solutions in order to give them the chance to receive everything on time as per their forecast and in line with their moving processes. And the one key thing to this is speed. Uh, second uh, key thing is uh, the fact that uh, uh, from a social perspective, as I mentioned already, the pressure for green solutions is very, very high. And therefore, we need to think whatever we develop further just to be green all the times. And uh, I believe third uh, and uh, not the last one, uh, e-commerce is, uh, as I mentioned already, is driving everything. So now, not only uh, business to customer e-commerce is developing, but also business to business. So uh, usual companies which previously were trading only in normal uh, sales relationship, now they are going online and uh, doing everything online. And that is uh, the way forward for me because uh, we are limited by this COVID. It's inevitable that in the future we will need to take these precaution measures and they will be staying behind because safety becomes the first and the most important things for every company. And uh, therefore, uh, this uh, being online, selling online and moving things quicker will be like uh, must-dos for all the companies. So I will advise everybody to adapt as quickly as possible and to go for digitalization, robotization, and all the automatization processes that they yeah. have. 
Thank you, Snezhina. Uh, Vitaly, uh, Meta, do, do you have some addings? I think uh, the, the only one word I can say, uh, efficiency. So at this moment, uh, we have limited air freight capacity. Uh, we have uh, sometimes uh, closed borders, so et cetera, et cetera. Uh, after COVID, we land. We will see a lot of solutions how we can send cargo from one point to another. But the key question was uh, efficiency, how fast, uh, so what about cost? Uh, so what about uh, uh, human sources, which actually are needed for this transportation? Uh, what about type of transportation? It also in terms of uh, fuel efficiency, in terms of green technology. So that's why I think we, we will face uh, with not maybe problems, but opportunities, how to be more efficient. So that's why from the point of now, we have to think about it in terms of cost, in terms of sources, in terms of documentations, in terms of uh, fuel efficiency, in terms of new mode of transportation, including drones and uh, maybe something else, as, as, as mentioned uh, with uh, four cycle or something like that. So uh, let's see about new era of supply chains, more efficient than now from all points of view. Mete, have you something to add to this comment? Um, I think we are of the same opinion. I would define generally uh, what, what Vitaly described as need for differentiation, especially uh, in the early days after the pandemic. Uh, everybody will look to differentiate their uh, logistics options to ensure that another repetition of the similar crisis would not, would not block uh, or create huge obstacles to, to, for the sustainability of the supply chain. Uh, but in the long term, I think before and after the pandemic, as Vitaly said, the need for automation, increased efficiency, and the uh, introduction of more technology uh, will, be, will continue to dominate the trends. Um, that's also because I think um, a little bit the need to have less um, human factor involved in the processes. Because the pandemic also showed that while the passenger traffic goes down, yes, the commercial activity uh, continues to create a lifeline for the aviation industry, especially through cargo carriage. Um, but if you think that during a pandemic, if there is a couple of employees in the facilities who get sick, then you will have to maybe close down the whole facility or send all your employees to, to home uh, for a quarantine. Then even if there is demand, then the facilities uh, will get stuck. So um, more and more technology, which eventually will create also the increased efficiency that Vitaly mentioned, I believe will 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 be the dominant trend in the industry. Okay. So, Meta, okay, thank you for your comment. Uh, we are uh, slightly running uh, short of time, therefore, I would like to go to the questions which are uh, addressed to us uh, via uh, Slido tool, and um, one is addressed to our customs office, Ms. Knoka. It's a very interesting question. Uh, it's going coming from uh, one of our uh, cargo partners in Riga. As we know, existing competition uh, in between ca countries about the cargoes. Uh, uh, how Latvian authorities planning to part participate in this uh, competition? Uh, just one adding, uh, uh, last year we had uh, customs officers uh, together in, uh, with us uh, in a uh, uh, Munich uh, biggest cargo trade fair and actually uh, that was a star shining uh, uh, within this exhibition. So what are, would be your contribution to con con competition? Uh, nothing new, electronic systems. More and more in uh, every pro single process. Uh, customs officers working with IT systems as uh, quick as it is possible. All necessary uh, steps 
uh, risk analysis and so on in a uh, small sec uh, part of second, less than second. Super. Uh, summarizing this, that means we will not see uh, customs officers in life uh, anymore, uh, just uh, via tools, uh, devices and electronic systems, right? Maybe a little bit physical controls. Maybe with uh, bicycles. <laughs> Who <Maybe> knows? Bicycles. <laughs> uh, actually, we have a lot of uh, subjects to discuss. Uh, for example, uh, uh, delivering of cargoes uh, by drones. Uh, we have not touched uh, upon uh, big data and uh, cargo flows, which are also, I think, uh, subject of individual uh, conference. Uh, but uh, definitely, we will stay uh, on, uh, in a focus and. Uh, for uh, some years, uh, uh, aviation cargo business uh, for Riga is a part of, uh, of its strategy and uh, already investment projects are represented and uh, I would like to specially address uh, Snežina about they uh, finalizing new logistics terminal in Riga airport, that is definitely cargo will increase. Uh, I would like to highlight uh, Atran Airlines, uh, they actually uh, connecting uh, Riga with uh, uh, Great China and uh, as, as we got uh, news today, that uh, these connections will be more frequent and I hope uh, Riga platform uh, Riga Airport will be a good platform for aviation cargo and uh, Meta, when uh, your when travel restrictions will be uh, uh, demolished, uh, definitely uh, we would like to see you here in, in live and uh, talk about cargo development uh, uh, as well. So thank you for all participants, thank you thank for you. comprehensive uh, discussion and uh, see you next time. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.